And here we are, this is Queen's Dude, and we're at the Los Olas Art Festival in Fort Lauderdale, and we're looking at a very interesting picture of a dog, and uh, we've got the artist right here, Michelle Martis. How you doing, Michelle? I'm great. How are you? Okay. Tell us a little about what we're looking at here. What's the medium, first of all? Uh, this is acrylic on canvas, right. and basically you're looking at dogs, not in the natural color, every color, but not brown, basically. What do we got here? Boston Terrier. Okay. Baxter. Uh, this is a boxer. His name is Scout. Uh -huh. We have a bulldog down here, Lola. Right. And this is a Rottweiler tank. Okay. And this was, my inspiration with this was basically I do a lot of commissions and I thought what a great idea to have the dog's like favorite toy and this could be the dog's name or what it does or whatever. Which is a sort of a concept piece. All very colorful stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, that's sort of the idea, you right. know. Um, there, if you're looking for a black dog or a white dog, you're not going to find it here. Don't, don't stop don't, here. Right. Don't ask me. Right. <laughs> that's my biggest pet peeve. Where's the black dog? Well, you know what? It's at the other end of the art show. Right. Um, labs, Yellow Labs, number one dog in America. And uh, finally, over here in the end? That's a coon hound. His name's Hubert. Michelle, your stuff is great. Uh, where can we see more of it? Have you got a website? I have a website. It's my name, michellemartis.com. Okay. That's M-I-C-H-E-L-L-M-A-R-D-I-S dot com. Okay, thanks and great, great work. Thank you. We're standing in front of a very unusual shot of a bird. Looks like he's coming right out of the water. And uh, here we are with the creator of this magnificent work, Pat Gerlach. Hello, Fred. How are you? I'm very good. Okay. Uh, first of all, what's the medium here? Photography. Okay. And how, what do you shoot? Film or digital? I shoot digital now. Okay. What did you originally do? Well, film for 30 years, and I switched about five or six years ago. Uh, all right. Take us for a little tour. Let's start over here. What are we looking sure. at? Sure. Well, just generally, the birds, the shorebirds, the egrets, herons, and so forth are mostly from Florida. Okay. And the animals are primarily from the west, the okay. Dakotas, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado. Okay, and what do we got over here? This little colorful. Uh, that colorful. is a, a painted bunny. He's from Florida. Okay. Yeah, and the birds. The other thing about the birds is, I mean, a lot of them are from the Everglades, but then they go all the way to Alaska and kind of everything in between. I all shoot right. birds pretty much wherever I am. Would this be Utah? No. Uh, no, again, the North Dakota Badlands. Badlands. Yep. Yeah. Sure. All the horses I have are wild horses from there. Right, right. And we're going to end on this nightscape. <laughs> now, how did you get this picture? This, this is incredible. This is all done in the camera? No, yes, no Photoshop? No, actually, that one was done on film. That's one of the older ones. Uh -huh. And uh, it, it really is the early part of a sunset. The deer is just silhouetted on the hillside with the sun going down behind him. How about your website? Pat Gerlach. Come over here. Com. Show us your, where's your, uh, your card. Right here? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, www.patgerlach.com. And here we have almost an abstract forest scene, and uh, standing right next to it is the artist, and it's Barbara... D Doncaster, how are you? Hi. Say your name one more time. Barbara Doncaster. Hi, Barbara. And where are you from originally? I am from Great Barrington, Massachusetts. That's okay. where my studio is. Okay. And tell us a little about your medium. Uh, what kind of work do you do? Oh, well, I do wonderful, colorful watercolors and watercolor and collage, so now they're mixed media, some right. of them. Take us for a little, little oh, tour. A little tour. These uh -huh. are straight watercolors. Okay. And then when you come into the Berkshire landscape, there you are. Mixed media, watercolor in collage. I see. All of these come from my gardens and my landscapes that surround my studio in Great Barrington. How are we around here? I am just below Butternut Ski area. I have an open studio all summer long. We're there from May until October. Okay. And people just drop in and say hello, see me paint, and away I go. How long have you been painting? I've been painting, oh my goodness, all my life, I shall say. We have four children, got tired of designing diapers, and here I am, painting, painting away. We're in wonderful Las Olas, doing art festivals, and uh, very receptive. People love my color. How about a website? Yes, I do. I have a website. It's barbara.caster.com. Check it out. Check my schedule. It's posted. And we have here a slightly different technique than we've seen today, and we're talking here with the artist, James Roberts. Hello, James. Good morning. I'm Jim. Hi. Hi, Jim. How are you? Good. What is this? Guillaume Taco. It 
means fish impression. Okay. The ancient art the Japanese used to record their catch. This is a snook, one of Florida's popular, most popular fish. Now, this technique, how long has it been around? Since 1860, so it's before even Impressionism. And what country did it come Basically, it's an Asian technique, okay. and, and Hawaiians made it very popular with all the colors of the deep water fish. Okay. And what about this? As a school of snapper. Okay. Now, all of these fish local to Florida, or do you travel you, around? Or? Yeah, I do take my papers in case a memorable catch and when I'm traveling to... to to take advantage and seize the moment. What are some of the more exotic destinations? Some of my favorite is Costa Rica and uh, bone fishing in the Bahamas. Okay. What are we looking at here? A swordfish? A sailfish. Sailfish. This, this, okay. this gentleman, um, they were fishing off St. Pete, Florida and couldn't revive the fish and the fellow asked, sit, called me up and said, can you make me a giataku? Ah. And this? That's a 41 pound mahi mahi. Wow. It was weighed in at a tournament, and the captain was nice enough to let me borrow the fish. How many would that feed? Oh, a, a fellow came in the booth yesterday, he said they fed 14 people off a 57 pound dolphin. Wow. And now changing colors here, what do we got? That's a big snapper from the same tournament. Now, are the colors you apply supposed to be uh, realistic? Yeah, you, with light color papers, right. you have the option of adding all the color you want to okay. pull the print. So nothing interpretive here. This is fairly uh, realistic colors to the fish. Yeah. I like, I, ever since the first fish I caught, I, I always marveled at the beauty of a little live fish. Okay. And how long have you been doing this? Six years. Thank you. Well, listen, thanks very much, and uh, I hope you have a, a few good catches today. <laughs> Thank you. Continuing with our aquatic theme, we have another creature emerging from the sea, but it looks like one of a more familiar species, and let's, let's meet the creator of this work. How you doing? What's your name? I'm Chris Marr. Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you. Okay, so your medium is photography. Indeed. All right. Now, are all of these works uh, unretouched, or do you do any photoshopping? Or I have been using Photoshop since it was first released uh, okay. back in 1985. So I do have a lot of Photoshop in my work. I spent 30 years in the darkroom. I now do everything in Photoshop. So you shoot digitally now? Been fully digital since 2002. Okay. And what's the advantage for you over film? Well, there are a couple advantages. I work with amateurs. These are not professional models. Okay. And so the feedback loop, them seeing what I'm doing as I'm doing it, is a tremendously important aspect of it. It's nothing you could have done with Polaroids or with uh, film in the past because coming back and looking at proofs is not an option. The dynamic of the shoot is very dependent upon their seeing how they are being photographed. Tell us about this. The, the model seems to have uh, been wrapped in something almost, like yeah, a cocoon. It's a double exposure that I photographed in a wind cave in the Mojave Desert. She really was in the wind cave, but then she stepped out. I took a second frame, composited them together so that I could add the transparency. My idea is never to show, here's a beautiful woman so much as here is the spirit, the power of woman. And getting even more abstract and yet recognizable, tell us about this. We uh, seem to have two models. Yeah, they were good friends, had been in the same ballet company together. I spent the day photographing them. This was literally one of the very last shots of the day. Photographed in infrared and um, just working the energy of the moment into an image. Two good friends, uh, one sitting in the background, the other scooched up against her. And fortunately, I've got 14-foot ceiling, so I was able to do it as an overhead shot. Okay, well, thanks very much, Chris. Your stuff is really great, and uh, wish you best of luck. You can see it on dreamsofthegoddess.com. And we're standing in front, front of what's almost a life-size mural of the Los Olas district here in Fort Lauderdale. And we're going to introduce the uh, creator of this wonderful work. And hi, what's your name? Hi, my name's April Davis. Hi, April. Hi. And tell us a little about what we're seeing here. Well, actually, this is an original acrylic painting, and it was chosen last year as the poster image for the Las Solas Art Fair. And obviously, they chose it for good reason. It's a wonderful work. <laughs> Take us a little yeah. tour of your booth. Okay, I would love to. All right, what's the medium okay. we're looking at here today? Um, actually, this piece right here is uh -huh. what's called an embellished G-clay reproduction. It's the newest type of reproduction 
productions on the market now. Right. But the original art is acrylic? The original art is acrylic okay. on canvas. Cool. Here's an original piece. This piece I just finished and it will be a poster image for a show in March in Tarpon Springs. So it'll be, um, it's of Craig Park in Tarpon Springs and it's and it has some manatee in the water. I was uh -huh. lucky enough I to go that. up there Yeah, at that time. Most okay. of my pieces are tropical because I live down here in southern Florida. Mm -hmm. This is from... Where are you from originally? New York. Me too. Where? <laughs> Whitestone. Oh, Queens. Queens, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. It was wonderful. I grew up there, went to Queens College. Oh. Yeah. Neighbor of mine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, swing us around over okay, here. Okay, and here's another original piece with tropical foliage. Mm -hmm. Very colorful, and it's six feet by four feet. Do you use a stepladder? <laughs> Absolutely. Since wow. this one is seven feet high, I need a little step stool and I go up and down, up and down and just now, paint it. What was your thought process when you decided one day you wanted to paint such large uh, canvases? Well, you know, it actually happens gradually and they just got bigger and bigger until they got to be this size and I love it and I would love to even paint even larger, but I'm a little bit stifled because my studio is not quite big enough. All right. Well, you do great stuff and, uh, you know, I hope wish you every success and uh, what about your website? Oh, my website. Yes. Yeah, hold that up for us. Okay, right here you go. Here. www. Yeah, right right there. there, aprildavis.net. Okay, there it is. And we're standing in front of what is known as panorama art, and uh, it looks like a one huge fisheye photograph, but actually it's a little more involved than that. Let's meet the artist, Christos. Yes. Hello. Do I get to hold this? Okay, good. Okay. You just talk. Tell us uh, what okay. goes into making a wonderful piece like this. Well, what we have here for the most part are 360 degree panoramic, what I like to call seamless mosaics. I basically shoot over 300 images, uh, fuse them together. To now, wait a minute. How exactly do you shoot them? Are you on a tripod? Yes, I have a calibrator. you pan the camera slightly? Yes, I have a calibrator set up. I, I do shoot uh, slivers, basically, so all around me. Of arc is each, uh, is each image? How many degrees? Oh, oh, it really depends. It really depends. Sure. Uh, yeah, but all in all, it adds up to about 360 degrees, like the one you're looking at right now. What we have here is Greece, rooftop Greece, mm -hmm. and basically the club med of the mountains in Greece. Here we have uh, Georgetown in DC. Uh -huh. It's about a five hour study of every corner in the intersection starting at about 3 a.m. all the way down if you pan down till about 8 a.m. Each piece is about an hour, hour and 15 minutes of time. That's great. And you're seeing about 200 and maybe 70 degrees worth of view here. Okay, thanks Chris. And I don't what's your uh, website? www. Yes, giantcolorfulrevolution.com. And another ocean landscape. This one appears to be uh, a nightscape. And uh, let's find out some information about this. We're standing here with the artist, Lillian. Hello, Lillian. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Tell us about this, uh, this first one we saw. Well, this one is actually a photo from a um, location in Brazil, Bahia, Brazil, which is where I'm from. And um, as a child, I visited many oceans and many locations in Brazil that inspired me to paint as I grew older. And so is the seascape above it, which is a sunrise in Brazil. And you can see that it's different from our Florida coast because we don't see these rocks and the strong oceans. What's your medium here? Oils. Okay. And this is a nice sunscape in Sarasota, actually. And um, the serenity of it inspired me to paint it because I love the colors and the warm colors that you see on the canvas there. This is a poppy actually and it's a abstract kind of view of a poppy with multiple colors and palette knife. This is a bird of paradise, strong red colors. Um, and going over to the blue end of the spectrum. Yes, you're right. And this is a, uh, as you can see, a palm tree done in palette knife and many multiple colors of yellow. Boy, I, I tell you, to have these things on your wall, I mean, it would just make you wake up refreshed every day. It just seems so vibrant. <laughs> and this is continuing on with the palm um, method or the palm scheme. Um, you see some palm fronds with the yellows and oranges that I'm into the orange colors right now. But mm -hmm. you can see some bright colors in the, in the background. And finally... Again, another palm frond with the orange background and some bright yellows to go with that. Have you got a website, Lillian? It is uh, www.lillianoilsoncanvas.com. 
Well, we all know how important fiber is for a diet and healthy living, but here's an artist that figured out something else to do with fiber, and let's meet him. Hello, how are you? Just fine, and how are you? Okay, tell us your name, please. Ron Witherspoon. All right, and tell us about what we're looking at over here. Well, I create fiber art originals. What is that exactly? Uh, using a wide array of fabric in strand form. Okay. Each strand laid individually to create the garments on my figure. Mm -hmm. The figure itself, the entire body is wood. Framing is all museum quality, meaning all materials used are acid free. The works are one of a kind mm -hmm. and uh, has been well received across this nation okay. and other parts of the world as well. This one is very, very beautiful. This piece is titled Miss Ellie. Uh huh. Is that Fitzgerald? No. Miss Ellie. Oh, just Miss Ellie. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> uh, this is a diva here, this large, uh, okay. with this uh, robe here. All right. Uh, how many different strands do you use in a work? Like oh, this? it's hard to say. Are Very difficult hundreds? to say. Hundreds, yeah, hundreds of hundreds, yeah. Uh -huh. How long does a piece like this take you to create? A piece like this takes about four and a half to five weeks to complete. Okay. And this is the couple. Really good detail. Well, thank you. Yeah, it gives it like a, a checkered suit quality to yeah. it. Yeah. Well, your stuff is really great, and we wish you the best of luck. How about a website? Uh, RondellFiberArt.com It's just what we need on this very sunny, warm South Florida day is a wonderful snowscape uh, from Bryce Canyon, Utah. And uh, let's, let's talk to the photographer. Hello, what's your name? Uh, Tom Stachinsky. Okay, and tell us about this wonderful triptych of Bryce. Yeah, it feels cool on this warm day, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. It really does. It's just a great place in Utah, Bryce Canyon. <clears throat> uh, very, very big snowstorm this day. I'd, I'd been waiting for five days of uh, blizzard to actually shoot this scene. Very nice piece. Now look at this one here. This is a, a little bit totally different uh -huh. mood. Oh, Antelope Canyon. Yeah, beautiful place. It's on uh, Navajo uh, Indian land. They'll take you back in there and, and let you experience it. It's beautiful, very spiritual place. Tell us a little about technique. What kind of camera you uh, the landscape I like to shoot with a traditional uh, 8 by 10 view camera, uh, film, large format film. What, what, so, what film do you use? Uh, uh, Fuji, Fuji. Here's a picture of me with my, my oh, camera yeah. shot uh, near my home in sure. Santa Barbara. Sure. This is uh, Arizona. Oh, Arizona. Uh, the town of Sedona has a lot of beautiful uh, buttes and monuments around there. Uh, this is the very famous Cathedral Rocks. Uh, this is a, a 400 millimeter on a, on, a, on a digital camera and all the animals I do with a Canon digital camera. Are you shooting about a thousand? Uh, a thousand a of a second, uh, probably faster. faster yeah. yeah, to freeze the, uh, faster, the birds. I, I try and shoot the animals really fast to uh, to get the stop action. I mean, you really did a great job with this yeah. one. It must have taken you a number of exposures to get uh, right. many, many, many shots yeah, to get sure. these in flight where they're banking just like this and uh, and uh, uh, showing their. How about your website? Can you hold up your card for us? Oh, okay. Uh, Let's see. Uh, TSimages.com is the website. You can go and visit the, uh, the animals and the uh, landscape there. Okay. Very nice stuff, Tom. Thanks Thank you. so much for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. And now we have a little change of pace, something a little more moody and evocative. And we're talking with an artist from the Ukraine, and we're meeting Irina. Hello, Irina. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank okay. you. How are you? And tell us a little about your, your paintings. Let's start with this one over here. Uh, what's the medium? Uh, it's uh, all on canvas, okay. almost everything. And um, my favorite um, styles, like new realism, and I, I try to do something okay. like that. And you can see what... what, what now, do you use models, or...? Uh, yeah, I use models sometimes. Sometimes I take uh, images from my um, imagination. Okay, tell us about this one here. This is actually my favorite painting. It's called Coming of Age. You can see girl and woman. It's not girl and not a woman yet. It's something like that. All right, now this is really caught my eye from the street. Yeah, it's, it's got a combination of a woman and a and shell. It's um, like if somebody tried to um, um, doesn't want to show his ind individuality. What if somebody wants to get in touch with you? Can you hold up your card for us? Yeah, sure. Hold that up. Right. 
And how can they reach you? Uh, by phone, right? Yeah, by phone. It's 773-954-5417. Terrific. Yeah. Okay, Irina, thanks very much. And for a change of pace, we have some porcelain Ikebana vase, and we're talking to Bob Ryberg. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. All right. Tell us a little about your, your work here. What, what, what are these things? These are vases based on Japanese flower arranging principles. Hold one up. Can you hold right. one up? Yeah. And hold it up you can, a you can see so this. Light on it. You can see this uh, metal frog holds the flowers in exactly the place and position and angles you want them to uh -huh. go to. Uh -huh. and you can make these very elegant yet simple arrangements of flowers. Right. And uh, I make lots of different varieties of these. Here's a uh, reddish brown glaze with some uh, alstroemeria and daisies in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's been a really popular glaze. It looks fabulous out in the light. Okay. And here's a uh, here's another one with a it was a nice blue rutile glaze. With, it's called my cloud pattern. So right. It's kind of on the stylized... Uh, from, from scratch, how do you make this? What, what do you I do? start with a lump of, uh, of white porcelain clay. Okay. I, I throw a dome shape. Okay. And then once it's kind of stiffened, I cut this center hole out at, a, at, a, at an angle, give it a little bit of dynamic tension, and, uh, and fire it to 2350 degrees. And let's look at this larger piece we have about. Yeah, this also is a, a, a large porcelain piece with some uh, two different glazes on it that kind of run and, and mix together and create this interesting uh, unpredictable pattern. And these are oil candles. Right. You can see one that's burning down here on this lower shelf. Oh, yeah. So they use the liquid paraffin and are incredibly clean and never drip wax or tip over. That's been a big seller. It's put several children through college. That's great. Where are you from originally? I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. And where are you living now? Um, Living in Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm okay. just down here to do the show. Okay, terrific. All right, thanks so much, Bob. What about a website? Uh, you can find me at uh, rybergceramics.com. Okay, there we are. And we're standing in front of a brilliantly backlit, uh, looks like a sculptor, and we have uh, an artist here who, when she isn't creating children, she's creating wonderful works of art. And what's your name? Marlena Rose. And tell us about this piece, Marlena. This is sand cast glass. All the work here is glass. Right. And it's poured in a liquid state into a sand mold. Okay. Which gives it a little bit of the rough quality. Texture, right. Texture to it. Right. And what about the one next to it? That's also in the same technique. It's sand cast. And I use fa incorporate found metals. Mm -hmm. And I put them in the sculptures. Right. And we'll take a little stroll this way. Pardon us, folks. How about this one? Does this have a title? Yes, it's called Double Moffat. This is inspired by uh, travels that I've taken. I've, I've traveled quite extensively, and this one is um, African influence. Has African influence. What is a Moffat? It is nothing in particular other than a word that I thought described this piece. Okay, works works for me. Okay, good. All right, and how about this one over here? This one is called the Red Bishop. Okay. And you don't want to miss this one. Very beautiful, especially the way the sun is is coming in from behind. Thank you very much. It's so the anthropology panel. A lot of my work, um, because it's poured in sand, looks like it could be dug up from the ground and um, looks like it's it's something ancient, but it's actually done with very modern techniques of today. Right, and this one over here, look, is it a Buddha or something? Or? Yes, this has a, um, the face is a, an Asian-inspired piece. Mm -hmm. uh, have you traveled to Asia? You know, I haven't, I haven't, but I've studied it pretty extensively. Mm -hmm. Well, Different you could have fooled me, it looks very authentic. Thank you. Instant antiquity. Thank you. What's your favorite piece in the whole booth? 
Well, that's hard. That's that's like asking what to, which is your favorite child. But right. um, <laughs> I'm very excited about this blue glass. It's new. Uh -huh. I'm working with as Let's well. Let's see as what it looks like from the rear. Anything special? Oh yeah. Well, actually, that's not meant to be seen, or is it? Uh, this one is more frontal. A lot of them are, are more in the round, like this one you uh -huh. can look, view from both sides. Okay. Oh, yeah. As well as this one next to it. I polished the side so you can see the, it's like waves or some sort of water structure. And tell us about these three over here. That is a triptych. And now those panels are more my abstract works, minimalist uh, series, and this could go on a wall, you know, could go behind a sofa, on a table. And how about a website? Come on around over here. Can we get you on the other side of this one? Uh, can you hold up your card? We'll frame you with your own work. Okay. Okay. Give us that website. www.marlenarose.com uh, No glass? I see glass. There's another website, Marlena Rose Glass. Okay, that's spelled what I'm at now. like Marlene Rose Glass. All right. All right, Marlene, thanks so much. I love your stuff. It's really nothing else I could hear today. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming out today. You're very welcome. Best of luck. Thank you. We have a interesting night streetscape here and uh, I wonder what city this might be. Let's talk to the artist, Roger Disney. Hello. First of all, the obvious question, any relation? Uh, there is, but it's, uh, it's a long way. Okay. So. Tell us about this work. What's the medium here? Uh, it's, uh, this one's oil on canvas. Um, it's, it's based on a photo I took in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, where I live currently. So. Okay. And moving around the corner here, we have a couple of figure studies. Yeah. Um, kind of loose gestural figure studies. I, I tend to let the um, the line or the canvas show, show through on the... you use a model or is this from your imagination? Uh, it's <laughs> both. No, uh, it's uh, from models, uh, photos and models okay. combination. So. Now we got this fairly wide canvas here. Yeah. Now, what about stylistically? You know, what are you trying to... Uh, the figures are obviously a little bit otherworldly. Uh, yeah, I, I like the long kind of distorted figure, uh, figurative work. Uh, I think I'm uh, sort of influenced by Gio Cometti, uh, his uh, sculptural pieces, um, but I kind of wanted some more uh, interpretive uh, value in my work um, besides just, you know, simple uh, imagery. So I'm trying to get some dialogue okay. that way. And is this supposed to be uh, like flowers or something? Yeah, this is just a sort of representational uh, land, floral landscapes that I was doing uh, mostly two years ago. This is the last few I got of those. But um, okay. and where are you from originally? Uh, Oklahoma City. Okay. Oklahoma. So. Sure. Sure. Will Rogers Turnpike. Yeah, yep. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's a lot of turnpikes there in Oklahoma. That's you gotta, right. you gotta have your change ready to right, the turnpike. Right. Now, how about a website? I see you have it on your. Yeah, it's just your uh, here. RogerDisney.com. Okay, that's pretty simple. Well, thanks very much, and best of luck. You do great stuff. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. <laughs>